In this module, we're going to look at interacting with OpenStack via the RESTful API interface. In previous modules, we looked at the Horizon user interface, the graphical web-based user interface, and the Python-based command line clients, tools like the Nova client or the Cinder client, uh, or more recently now, the aggregated um, OpenStack client, which actually includes many of the services of the individual previous Python clients. An example of this would be something simple like uh, listing the available servers uh, using the Nova command to do a list of the servers that have currently been deployed into this environment. And here, in this case, we see a single server has been deployed, and we see some of the basic information around that. Using the APIs, we can't just talk directly to the Nova API. We first have to actually get a token that gives us permissions to talk to the API. And there are two models for that token. One is just a simple authentication token where we actually understand whether the user that's making the request into Keystone is actually authenticated against the environment. Um, and the second is a scoped token, a token that actually includes the tenant information and therefore also the role capabilities that that user has within that particular tenant. What we really want is the tenant-based interaction with the API system. We're going to request from Keystone the tenant scoped token so that we can actually talk to this demo project. Otherwise, we'd only be able to prove that the demo user that we're going to be using here has authentication right to talk to Keystone at all. We can actually get an idea of the actual API requirements by using the debug command associated with the command line clients. Most of the command line clients will do this and give you a reasonably accurate portrayal of the actual command line requests that are going on. Now, these are not 100% equivalent to what actually has to happen. They don't actually show you all the commands, and they are giving you a prototype concept using the curl command as an example. Turns out the Python client has a different way of actually doing this, but what we as an end user might do would be to use something like the curl tool to, to do this. And we can see right here, this is the actual request to, to Nova for a list for the servers and specifically server detail. Now we also pass a user agent, we pass the fact that we accept JSON as a response, and here's our token that actually allows us to talk to the Nova endpoint. We have to get that token, and earlier in the debug output we actually see first a request just into a keystone endpoint, a get request that's basically saying, hey, is this actually the endpoint? Can I actually even talk to you? And secondly, there is a little bit of information implying that a token has been requested. This particular debug output is not as complete as the actual request response output from the initial. Uh, so here we see request against an endpoint and then a response, uh, including some information that was responded to, to the system with. And actually here's a JSON blob that came with that response. We're going to look to try to get an equivalent response from the Nova system. So we're going to try to get to the point where we can make this same kind of request and get a response that looks very similar to here, this response, which is the body um, of, of this uh, JSON object, or actually set of JSON objects. So let's go through it and do this. One of the most important pieces of information which we actually see in the output of this environment is where the keystone endpoint is because from this keystone endpoint, we can actually determine all of the other endpoints in the system that we would need to talk to. With this particular request, I can actually get enough information actually to talk to the Nova interface as well. And so this is the Nova endpoint that we'll be, we'll be looking for, but we're actually gonna get that from keystone. So the first thing we wanna do is make sure that we're talking to the right endpoint. And we can do that by uh, making sure that we have a copy of the endpoint effectively loaded into the system. So here I'm just using a, a simple uh, command line command to create a, effectively a variable on the command line in the, in the Linux command line so that I know which endpoint I'm talking to. And this is the keystone endpoint. And from here, I can do simple things like um, request just a response from the endpoint itself, effectively the same thing that the Nova command line client was doing first. Um, and we can just pass in the keystone endpoint parameter. And we see we get a response. It turns out this is the same response that we got up here in the Nova section as well. Yep, it's version stable. Um, it's a stable version updated on 2014. And we get the same kind of response here, version, it's status stable, updated 2014, etc. So we know we're talking to the right location, but what we really want to do is we want to get a token. And in order to get a, a token, and specifically a token that's actually scoped relative to the tenant that's actually consuming the system, we actually need to pass some more information. So 
I'm going to pass a more complete uh, request here. And just to make it maybe a little easier to see, we'll just blank out the rest of the, the content from earlier. So again, I'm going to use the curl tool. I'm not going to ask, I'm actually going to ask curl to be a little quiet in terms of what it spits out, but I do want to see the headers that get sent to and from the, the service, the Keystone service. Here I'm using the Keystone endpoint, but I'm actually also passing the request for tokens component. And the tokens request is actually a post. Now to determine whether it's a get or a post or a put or a delete, basically the, the uh, API verbs, the restful verbs that exist, we'd actually look this up in the uh, uh, API documentation, the OpenStack API documentation. And if we look at this web page with API documentation, it actually breaks this down into um, the different types of requests that you can make. And then you can further expand this information and see what kinds of parameters you could either pass if it's a post kind of a command uh, pass as a JSON object. And in some cases, also the information that you might get back from the object. There are pages for all of the different APIs, all the different API endpoints in the OpenStack environment. In this case, this is just the Keystone page. Now. We've decided that we're going to do a post for tokens. And what we have to actually pass along with that is a JSON object. So we're actually going to tell the system that our post includes a content of application uh, JSON data and that we would like a JSON object back. Um, many of the OpenStack APIs used to accept XML, but as of Kilo, more and more of those services are being deprecated uh, for JSON only support. That simplifies, I think, everybody's life altogether. Now, the object that I'm passing is described here. So this is a JSON object. The, the principal object is auth, and then there are sub-objects. There's a tenant key value pair, which I guess could be considered the prototype of an object. Uh, tenant name is demo. And then I have an object for password credentials, and that has two key value pairs, a username and a password defined in it. So I'm going to pass this entire object into Keystone, and Keystone is hopefully going to then return a response, which would be a JSON blob. Now, most JSON blobs, as we've seen, are these long strings that don't have any carriage returns or tabs or other spacing in them. And so from a human perspective, it's a little difficult to read. So what I'm going to do is cheat a little bit and pass the output of the command through something that makes it human readable. So I just want to make sure I get the last line from any results that I get out of the system. So that's, that's this tail command gets me the last line. And then I'm going to pipe it through a little Python tool that reads the JSON and makes it more human readable, basically prettifies it. And so in doing this, now I should be able to run this command and I get a whole host of output here. What I'm getting out of this output is not just the token, actually the token's at the very bottom here. Here we can see the token object. And with the token object, I also have information about the tenant that this is a token specific to. So this is a scoped token. It is scoped to this tenant. In this case, the tenant's name is demo. And the token itself is actually this ID here. And while we're looking at this, I'm just going to grab this to token. I will just say export, I'll export token equals this. Okay, so now I've captured the token. This token's good usually for 24 hours. That is actually system specific, so that could actually be shortened up or lengthened depending on the actual OpenStack deployment. But in general, you can assume that a token is probably gonna be around for you for 24 hours. So with this token now defined, the other thing we need is the Nova endpoint. Now we saw it in the Nova debug, but that's kind of cheating. Instead, we wanna look at the service catalog that also gets returned with this particular tokens endpoint. And so we start at the top looking through, here's the service catalog object that got returned with our request and the endpoint for different services. Now it turns out that Nova compute, the default Nova compute endpoint is actually the very first one in the list. So we can come in here and we can grab the public URL and we'll actually also create a little variable for this as well. Uh, but Nova endpoint is this, okay. So now I have the Nova endpoint and I have my token, and now I can finally go and talk directly to Nova and ask it for information. The thing I want from Nova is I want to know what servers exist. So um, I'm going to ask for a lightweight version of the request that the Nova command line client actually does. Uh, and here we see that request. Um, so I'm, again, using the curl command, again, asking for a little bit of information, but not too much. Um, I am going to pass only one header in this case, uh, because I didn't actually tell it what to do. By default, curl will do a get. So in reality, I am doing a get against the endpoint, and I'm going to pass in the headers my authentication token. 
because I don't have, I'm not posting anything or putting anything, I have no way to pass additional information other than through um, the headers that I'm passing or the specific request that I'm making, the specific URL that I'm requesting. So in this case, I'm requesting information on servers. That's encoded here in the URL path. And I'm passing my authentication token so that I actually can get the, U the servers that are specific to my demo tenant and user. And again, I grab the last object that gets spit out and pipe it through the little Python prettifier. And the result that I get, as we can see, is a list of servers. There's one server. It happens to have a name of demo. And there's more information that's available. Now, this was just the simple servers request. We could actually, if we actually get rid of this, we can actually pass the details list. And now we'll get a much larger blob of data. This is more equivalent to what we saw as an output from Nova earlier. If I scroll way up here and look at the output of our Nova debug command here, we see the same general object. This is the same object that I saw at the very end down here. And in this object, I get all kinds of information about the system, including other pointers to other information that I might collect, uh, things like network information and, and service references and things of that nature. So again, this has been just a really simple view of the OpenStack API and API interactions. Uh, there's a lot more that you can do with these APIs. Actually, you can do everything that you can possibly do through OpenStack through these kinds of API calls. Obviously, this is not the simplest way to communicate with OpenStack if you're just trying to do something like turn a virtual machine on. But if you have very specific automation tasks that you're trying to accomplish, understanding how the APIs work is actually fairly important. So again, in this particular little section, we've looked at the command line equivalent of Nova List implemented as a set of API calls against both the Keystone API in order to get a tenant scoped token, and then against the Nova API to get, actually get the list of servers.